Hello, my goats. This is Griffin with the Command Valley Podcast. Here at the Command Valley Podcast, we strive to bring you quality EDH content, deck techs, gameplays, other miscellaneous videos that just help you enjoy your commander experience. On today's deck tech, we're going to be going through the six-fold path of building a commander deck for one of the new Theros legendary creatures named Heliod Suncrowned. So Heliod Suncrowned is two and a white for a 5-5 legendary enchantment creature god. He has indestructible. As long as your devotion to white is less than five, Heliod isn't a creature. Whenever you gain life, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature or enchantment you control. And one and a white, another target creature gains lifelink until end of turn. So if you haven't already heard about the excitement over Heliod, there is an infinite combo that goes along with him uh, using Walking Bliska or Triskelion. Now I won't go into details of this combo, I have made this deck to be more of a life gain deck instead of a combo deck. For this deck tech we're mostly focusing on the life gain white commander strategy. So let's jump right into it. Step one in our sixfold path to building commander deck is who's our commander. And today we have Heliod Suncrowned. Step two is what is going to be our strategy with this deck. Like I alluded to a little bit previously, we are going for a life gain synergistic strategy. In this deck, we're trying to put the claws on Heliod that puts plus one plus one counters when you gain life to the best use. And also being able to give creatures lifelink that will fuel our strategy as well. Now I've got four different steps to this deck that are going to help us understand how we're going to win with this deck and what we're trying to do. The first one is life gain, the second one is tokens, the third one is advantage, and the last one is finishers. Alright, so let's just jump right in. So life gain. Typically life gain is seen as a subpar strategy. There are a lot of downsides and weaknesses to life gain that it's hard to try to run around, but in this deck we're really trying to close out and really tighten the strategy that is life gain. Now with Heliod, since we're gaining life and putting plus one plus one counters on creatures, we're going to try to abuse that to the best of our ability. The first thing that I wanted to mention with the life gain is the life gain creatures. Now not typical life gain, these are the ones that give you life whenever a creature enters the battlefield. So these creatures are the Soul Sisters, Soul Attendant, and Soul Warden, Auroch Champion, Daxos from the new Theros set, Suture Priest, these are all creatures that gain you life whenever a creature enters the battlefield. Uh, with Daxos, he gives you life when they die as well. Suture Priest gives a little bit of extra oomph to it by making your opponents lose life when they bring creatures into the battlefield. The two enchantments are Ajani's Welcome and Authority of the Consoles, which are essentially just the same thing on enchantments. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield, you will gain a life. Now, it's really important to have multiple of these out. That's why I've included so many. Because the more of these that we have out in the battlefield, that means every time we cast a creature, we're getting multiple instances of life gain, which are multiple counters that we're putting on creatures. Now, you may not think, oh, we're well, putting three plus one plus one counters on one turn. That's not very good. But you'll see later in this deck, we'll have a lot of ways of putting a lot of creatures out. And this plus one plus one counter strategy suddenly blows up really huge. Some more life gain creatures I've included are Rock's Faith Mender, which doubles all of your life gain. Uh, Linden from Throne of Eldraine, which gives you a life for each attacking creature. And Sunscorched Region, which every you cast a spell, you gain a life and get a plus one plus one counter on it. Last one I want to talk about is Martyr of Sands, which is a one mana, one one, but for one generic you can reveal X white cards from your hand. Sacrifice Martyr of Sands, you gain three times X life, which is another little payoff of gaining life. Now, of course, all of these creatures and enchantments are incremental life gains. They're not going to gain us a whole ton at once, but that's important because we want individual instances to set off heal in multiple times. However, if we do want to gain massive amounts of life, we can use things like Beacon of Immortality to really push us up there. Now, moving on to the tokens, before I go into the list of what I have, what's important to remember about the tokens and the reason why they're so important is with all of our life gain creatures that give you life whenever a creature enters the battlefield tokens are extremely useful in this strategy the more tokens we can make the faster that we can make them the faster that we can build up our board and build massive creatures so the first one is secure the waste which is white and x to put x 1 1 warriors onto the battlefield luminarch ascension which is an enchantment that allows us to be able to pump out four fours if it has four more counters on it Hallowed Spirit Keeper, which gives us creatures when it dies, counting the number of creatures in our graveyard. Entry of the Angels, which is our miracle card, which allows us to put massive amounts of 4-4 white angels creatures token onto the battlefield with Vigilance. 
Crested Sunmare, which goes really well in our deck. A horse that at the beginning of our end step, if we have gained life this turn, we create a 5-5 horse with Indestructible because of Crested Sunmare. Super good because we're gaining lots of life. Deploy to the front, which is 5 white white for a sorcery, but X11 one, one white soldier creature tokens onto the battlefield, where X is the number of creatures on the battlefield. Now this may seem pretty expensive, but that effect is going to be incredible when we have lots of creatures out. Now in this deck, we're also going to want little bits of token making, simply because we want to get out there early. So we have Spectral Possession, Captain's Call as a couple of our quick token makers. And lastly, I wanted to include Oketra uh, from War of the Spark, which allows us to create 4-4 zombies whenever we're casting creatures, and Daring King of Keldor, which gives us creatures when we take damage. Lastly, or finale, we have Finale of Glory, which is a sorcery for White White X. We can create X 2 2 White Soldier Creature Tokens with Vigilance. If X is 10 or more, also create X 4 4 White Angel Creature Tokens with Flying and Vigilance. Now, again, just wanted to reiterate how important these two sections are. This is going to be the main focus of our deck. With Heliod out and our Soul Sister type effects on the battlefield, making tokens repetitively, making lots of tokens, even small tokens, means we can build our board very quickly, build them up very powerful, and even give them lifelink to gain more life. This is going to be the focus of this deck, is to really kind of pump out lots of creatures, make them huge, and then just beat down our opponents. But of course, we do have two more sections in here. The next one is advantage. And what I mean by advantage is the life gain and the tokens themselves. While we may draw a god hand and just draw really well and be able to pump those up as fast as we can, we're probably going to want some things to help that strategy a little bit more, just kind of push it up on a higher notch. So the cards I've included in here, the first one I've included is Archangel of Thune, which is our classic Archangel. Whenever we gain life, put a plus one, plus one counter at each creature we control. Amazing. The next one I want to talk about is Elish Norn. Just a fantastic, although very expensive, pump that also reduces our opponent's power as well. Resplendent Angel, which is an angel that allows us to be able to make tokens if we gained enough life. Two all-stars in this deck, Abzan Battle Priest for three and a white. We have a three, two human cleric that you can outlast and also says each creature you control the plus one, plus one counter on it has lifelink. Just adding a little bit more lifelink in there. Another one is Abzan Falconer, which is two and a white for a two, three human soldier with outlast. Each creature you control with a plus one, plus one counter on it has flying. Sarah Avatar, which is just a seven mana massive creature, which power and toughness is equal to our life total, which I guarantee is going to be massive at all times. So giving this guy lifelink, that's how we're going to be doubling our life total. Micaeus the Hollowed, which has plus one plus one counter synergies and allows us to be able to put a plus one plus one counter on each other creature we control. Animation Module, which is a really good one mana artifact that's going to allow us to be able to put servos onto the battlefield, gain a life, pay one, make another servo, gain a life, and just keep this going for as much mana as we have. And then we have our enchantments, Anointed Procession, three and a white. If a token would enter the battlefield, you create double that amount instead. Divine Visitation, if you would create a token, so you create a 4-4 four, four white angel creature token with Vigilance and Flying. Angelic Accord, if you have gained four more life at the end of your turn, you create a 4-4 four, four angel with Flying and Vigilance. True Conviction, which gives all of our creatures lifelink and double strike. And my personal favorite, Cathar's Crusade which whenever a creature enters the battlefield, it puts a plus one plus one counter on each creature. Now, lastly, before we move on to the finishers, I wanted to quickly mention proliferating. Now, I didn't include too many proliferate spells into this deck simply because I wanted to include more slots in for life gain and token making. However, there are two that I've included in here that I feel are really going to assist you without taking too much away from the life gain. The first one is Karn's Bastion, which is a land that for four, you can tap it and proliferate and Grateful Apparition, which is one and a white for a one, one flying whenever it deals combat damage to a creature or planeswalker, proliferate. And if you really wanted to put this in here, Contagion Engine, which is an artifact when it enters the battlefield, put a minus one, minus one counter on each creature target player controls, and for four and tab, you can proliferate twice. <laughs> Lastly, I wanted to talk about the finishers in this deck. Now, again, since we're not necessarily including Walking Ballista in this deck, I have included Walking Ballista, but no ways to tutor it. But other ways of being able to win just right out, one of the best ones we have in here is Aetherflux Reservoir that we can pay 50 life and shoot our opponents for 50 in the face. Now, it is going to be very easy in this deck to get above 100 life. 
We're gonna be giving our counters to our creatures. We're gonna be giving lifelink to those big creatures and gaining more life. You'd be surprised how much life you're gonna gain before you drop this artifact. So do not underestimate the power of the reservoir. Do not underestimate the power of the Death Star. Stormherd, which is eight white white for a sorcery that puts X11 Pegasi onto the battlefield where X is our life total, which again, we're probably gonna be at a very high life total. So don't be surprised if you drop 91 ones on your turn. With your soul wardens, they're all gonna be massive creatures. And th th you can include these if you want. I generally don't play with combos or immediate wins, but these ones are a little bit better because you have to wait a turn. It's Felidar Sovereign and Tess of Endurance. Essentially the same thing. Felidar Sovereign's a little bit better, but if you have above 40 for Sovereign and 50 for Endurance, you win the game. But you have to wait a turn rotation to be able to do that. So I mean, if you wanted to throw in an Emergent Zone to try to sneak it out of nowhere, definitely this deck is really yours. You do what you want. I'm not landing. All right, so that's how we're gonna attain our strategy. Now I wanted to move on to the interaction part, which is our fourth step in our sixfold path. Now in mono white, we do have some good options for interaction and protection. First, our classic swords to plowshares and path to exile, which are one mana instants that allow us to exile creatures. Condemn, which allows us to remove a creature from combat. Darksteel Mutation, which is our enchantment that turns a creature into a 0-1 bug with Indestructible. And then Grasp of Fate, which is an O-Ring-esque effect, but we get to do one of each of our opponent's permanents instead. And then quickly wanted to mention the board wipes we have in this deck. Now, I don't really like having board wipes in here since we are a mono-white deck. We're really focusing on playing lots of creatures and pumping them up. However, there is a way that we can get around this. So, Austere Command, Citywide Bust, Dusk to Dawn... These are all board wipes that destroy creatures with either power three or greater or four or greater. Now, Austere Command can also give you a little bit more flexibility, but the reason why I like these cards is if you're trying to build and you're just not quite there yet and you have a lot of small creatures, um, or even if you do have a couple creatures but not enough to be able to make a presence on the board, you can wipe the board and try to continue on from there. Another one is Elspeth Sun's Champion, super all-star in this deck because she's creating tokens. She also has the board wipe effect on her that destroys creatures with power four or greater. I haven't play tested this deck. I don't know if I'm gonna love these. You do not have to include all four. I'm probably only gonna include one or two, but definitely Elspeth because she helps your token strategy as well. But just be aware that this is probably gonna be something that you run into during the game. Moving on, we have our protection step. So the first two I wanted to include is Selfless Spirit and Lena Selfless Champion. These both do essentially the same thing, except Selfless Spirit is a little bit better since she's less costed, but you are able to sacrifice them to be able to give your other creatures indestructible. Lena Selfless Champion has the text that they do have to have power less than Lena, but she also gives you creatures when she enters the battlefield. Next we have Teferi's Protection, which is another all-star white card which allows us to be able to phase out at instant speed. Now this card is very expensive. This is probably something you can cut if you don't have the money for it, but if you have one laying around that you wanna use in your mono white deck, then definitely throw it in there. And then I wanted to include the instant indestructible spells like Unbreakable Formation, Make a Stand and Root Board Defenses. These all have a little bit of extra text on them, but essentially we're caring about them giving our creatures indestructible. It's going to be very pertinent to our opponents that board wipe is going to hurt us very badly. But one of the ways that we can avoid that is by including instant spells that gives our creatures indestructible. Real quick before we move on to the last step of building a commander deck, which is our reflection, I want to include the ramp and the card draw in this deck. Because I'm sure you're wondering, Griffin, mono white is the worst color. How, how are you even going to ramp? First off on the ramp, we have our Theros-themed ramp with Nyxos Shrine to Nyx and Nyx Lotus, which allow us to ramp with our Devotion. Since we're in a mono-white deck, or even in any mono-colored deck, this is going to help us out a lot. Marble Diamond, which is an artifact that taps for a white. Soul Ring and Thran Dynamo as our artifacts, along with Gilded Lotus. Knight of the White Orchid, which is a 2-mana creature that when it enters the battlefield, we can search for lands and put them onto the battlefield tapped if our opponents have more lands than us, which is a majority of the time. And also Boreas Charger, which does the same thing. <laughs> Lastly is our card draw. And I'm excited to talk about card draw because one of the cool things about life gain is that we have ways of drawing cards outside of every other color. Now, I know you're kind of suspicious of that, but check these out. 
The first one is Well of Lost Dreams, which is a four mana artifact. Whenever you gain life, you may pay X, where X is less than or equal to the amount of life you gained if you do draw X cards. This is fantastic in our deck. We're going to be gaining lots of incremental life here and there all the time. This is going to be able to assure that we're always going to have cards in our hand to keep on going with this tank that we're building. Dawn of Hope, which is a two mana enchantment that whenever you gain life, you can pay two. And if you do draw a card, and it also can give us some tokens if we really need to pump mana into something. We have Azor's Gateway, which is kind of card draw and also kind of mana ramp if we can get there. For two mana, we have an artifact for one and tap. You can draw a card and exile a card underneath Azor's Gateway. Then if you earn five different cards with different converted mana costs underneath Azor's Gateway, you flip it and it is a land that taps for your life total, which is going to be amazing in this deck. Now, these two are pretty funky. They are Etched Oracle and Mindless Auto Maiden. Now, the reason why I want to include this is because if you really dig deep into how they work, with Heliod, we can be able to put lots of plus one plus counters on these creatures and then be able to pay mana to remove them to be able to draw cards. This is going to be extremely good in our deck because we're making lots of plus one plus one counters. We can put them onto these artifacts and just constantly get rid of them to be able to draw more cards to fuel our deck. We have our classic skull clamp that we can attach onto our creatures and if they die we draw two cards now a lot of our creatures are going to be one ones anyway so that little tack that gives them plus one minus one is going to be coming to our advantage and lastly i want to include three more expensive artifacts that you can throw in here i wouldn't recommend throwing all of them in here but if you wanted to include one or two I don't think it would hurt. They are a little bit more expensive, so prepare to be a little bit less aggro. They are the Immortal Sun, Almorat's Archive, and Mind's Eye, which each of these are powerful artifacts that allow us to draw either multiple cards on our upkeep or in Mind's Eye's case, to be able to pay mana when other opponents draw a card to be able to draw a card. Now, the Immortal Sun also pumps up our team, stops other people's Planeswalkers, a little bit better advantage on there. But again, you do not have to include these, but if you wanted to include a little bit of extra card draw, doesn't hurt to play these. And lastly, I just wanted to include Tamiyo's Journal, which is a artifact that at the beginning of our upkeep, we investigate. That means create a clue token. And then we can tap it and sacrifice three clue tokens to search our library for any card. This is going to be really cool during this game because this is an underrated card. A lot of people miss it. And we're going to be able to tutor for the thing that we're going to need at the time. All right, our last step to building a commander deck is our reflection. Now, I haven't played this deck. However, I did want to include some thoughts that I've put into this deck. Number one is how are we going to play this deck? Since we are playing mono white, one of the most important things in this deck is we struggle to ramp and we struggle to card draw. One of the ways to be able to play around that is only play as much as you need to. Now, this is a problem I've seen amongst many new players is that they play all the cards in their hand and they have such a big advantage over the table. But if there's any board wipe, if there's any removal, if there's any interaction at all with your board and you lose it you have no cards in hand you have no card draw you have no way of getting there that is the worst place to be my recommendation for this is to only play what you need to you only want to either be a little bit ahead or a little bit behind knowing that you can get a little bit ahead if you don't need to play your whole hand if you don't need to play things that create you more tokens if you're already ahead save it when you need it one of the most important things to remember is that people will see what you're doing and if you're too ahead they will stop you so make sure that you save your card draw save your cards and be able to play those to win so two cards that i was going to include in here but after reflecting i decided to take them out the first one is avacyn angel of hope which is an 8-8 flying angel with vigilance that gives it and all other or other permits indestructible and then also Safara Sky's Blade, which gives other creatures we control indestructible. Now the reason why I didn't include these cards is because with our strategy, we're gonna be able to build up things so fast that it's gonna be hard to be able to select a whole slot of cards that cost that much mana that aren't gonna allow us to just win the game. We were gonna use protection in our instants and our creatures that are low costed to be able to really propel us and not waste turns casting something that is really gonna be removed very easily. And again, I just wanted to reiterate, there are a couple of win conditions in this deck. You do not have to play them. You could play all of them. That is entirely your choice. This is just my personal flavor of life gain for you guys. You can build it however you want to. You can make more tokens. You can make more life gain. This is your art. I am just the advocator of it. So please 
don't take what I say as a complete full list of what your commander should be or what your commander deck should be, simply just more of a guide or a helpful tool to help you build it. Now, I hope you guys look out for Heliod Suncrowned. It was a super fun commander to build. I'm really excited to put it together and play it, and I hope you guys are too. With that, that's the end of the video. Please check out our other videos on our channel. We have deck techs that release every Monday. We have gameplays coming out. We have new content that's going to be releasing pretty soon. I'm really, really excited to show it to you guys. Other than that, you have a fantastic night. Love all you guys. May you draw well, may you curve out, and have a good night.